Hello Floss Tube friends. This is Lisa from Lady Huzzah Presents and Lady on Floss Tube and Lady Huzzah on Instagram. I can't believe we're at January 30th already. This year it's only one month and it's zipping by. It's so crazy. Anyway, it's been a little bit since my last Floss Tube. That was on the 23rd of December. Um, there's been a lot happening in this last month and I hope to have you step into my life a little bit and I will catch you up on what has been happening. Okay, so I am going to call my floss tube today Whip Go A Go Go. I have never done a Whip Go before um, and I decided to give it a try this year. So I have all of my project bags with all of my Whip Go pieces all the, all categorized and I will share them all with you. So that'll take a while. Um, so settle in, get something to enjoy, a hot beverage or an adult beverage or just a glass of water and you're stitching and settle in and join me on my floss tube. A little bit of old business first. Um, on my last floss tube, I had selected winners for my beaded lanyard and my Christmas sewing set. I have yet to hear from those winners, so I will shout them out again, and hopefully I will hear from them before my next floss tube, or if I don't, I will select other winners. This beaded lanyard is, I love it. I have one similar that I attach my scissors on, and when I'm stitching in the car on the road trip with my husband, I attach my scissors um, to it, and it makes it so handy because I am always seem to be fishing my scissors out from between the seats, and I, I hate that. It hurts my hand, and I'm often left without finding the scissors until we stop somewhere. So the winner of the beaded lanyard was Susan Parker, 5904, I believe it is, 5907, let me just check my note, 5904, Susan Parker, 5904. And then the other thing that I had um, for a gift was a Christmas sewing set chart. And this is a new chart. And this goes to Denise Rouse Goddard, 5625. So Susan and Denise, if you see the floss tube, please email me. I will have my email in the show notes and I will make sure I get these out to you. Otherwise, on my next floss tube, they will go to someone else. Now you must remember, in order to be eligible for my giveaways, you must like and sus uh, subscribe to my floss tube. It would be nice if you would ring the bell so you're notified of future floss tubes. And in your comments, you just have to comment the keyword that I'm looking for that I will announce with each giveaway. And also, um, please don't mention prize, raffle, chance, whatever, because somehow I understand that gets creepers and nobody wants creepers in their floss tube. So anyway, so far, hopefully these prizes will be awarded this time. I'd also like to update you now on some of my finishes from from recent recent finishes. Oh, I'm getting all tongue-tied already and I'm just starting. This is my temperature tree. This is complete. I have shown this to you every time I've done a floss tube. And this was a design from Stitch and Mommy. And there's 12 branches that um, relate to a month, a month of the year. So, and then every branch had a leaf on it that corresponded to the amount of days of that month. So there was a list of colors and a color key that corresponded to the high temperature for my town in Tawano, Virginia um, for every day of the year. So every day I would check the high temperature and then either stitch it that day or just keep it on a list and hopefully stitch it another day. But my temperature tree is complete. I absolutely love it. I love the way the colors went from the colder colors up through the top of the tree in the summertime and then rounded out with getting cooler again as December approached. So this was really fun. I stitched this over one. I believe it was on 
25 count Lugana. I believe it was 25 count. I don't think it was 28 count. Um, anyway, super fun. This is from Stitch and Mommy on Etsy. And she has lots of um, temperature related designs that you can choose from. This year, I chose not to do that. I decided to do Whip Go instead. Um, the other finish I have was my blessing sampler that I spoke of in my last floss tube. And this was something that was started January 1st. And the goal was to finish it by the end of January to bring you blessings and good luck throughout the year. So I was thrilled to have finished it. This design is Be Not A Dunce from Mama Loves You GB. Um, this is stitched on 36 count doubloon. And I believe my thread was a Gentle Arts wrought iron. And um, I did personalize this for me up at the top. Um, Michelle of Mama Loves You GB had charted the numbers to 15. But what I did is I stitched them to 10 and then put my initials up at the top and then 1-2024 to signify that I had done this in January of 2024. So there's my blessing sampler. It was a really fun stitch. I just love the advice in this sampler to be not a dunce. Thank you, Michelle. This was a fun stitch. Okay. So Christmas was great. Um, our son was visiting from New York and we really had a nice couple days together celebrating, enjoying good meals, good times and playing games together. Our daughter, unfortunately, was not home this year from Germany, but my son during COVID figured out how we could play a card game via Zoom. So we one day dialed in Zoom to our daughter and we played a card game together and we had her on a laptop at the end of the table. So it was the next best thing to being there. And we really had a lot of fun together. This coming Christmas, um, Christmas of 2024, we all hope to travel to Germany to visit her and share Christmas in Germany with our daughter. So that's something really fun to look forward to. Okay, so the other thing that I um, received for Christmas that I'm really excited about from my husband and my son and Santa, I received a Cricut Maker 3 and I can tell it has a learning curve attached to it, but I did dabble in it somewhat over Christmas with my son and I think the possibilities are endless and I can really make some fun things for my friends and relatives and um, maybe for stitching exchanges that would correspond with something maybe that I have stitched on the Cricut. It can cut many, many different materials and I just think it's fun and who kn I guess I needed another Pandora's, Pandora's box, but it is wide open. So I'm really looking forward to learning how to use my Cricut. If any of you have a Cricut and want to give me some advice, please feel free to post any advice you have in the comments because um, I'm really excited to learn how to master it. My niece who lives in South Carolina has one and I plan on going to visit her one weekend for a crafty weekend. She said, Auntie, you go to your stitching weekends with your friends, so why don't you come here for a um, crafting weekend? And I said, you are on, we'll have to do that. So it'll be, it'll be fun. We just have to get that on the books and make it happen. Okay, so the other thing that I did recently is I traveled to um, Ohio for the Stitch Away, it's called Stitch Away 2024. It was hosted by Keepsakes Needlework. And I had never been to Keepsakes before. And so I was anxious to see the shop, but then the um, retreat was held at the Houston, Houston Lodge um, and Convention Center in a, it's a park in um, Ohio and it was beautiful. But it was held the weekend of Martin Luther King and I was supposed to travel out to visit my friend Sylvia for a few days before the retreat started. 
and it was so snowy and icy here. Um, and from what I saw along the way that I just didn't drive, it wasn't worth risking it on that Saturday. So I did drive out on Sunday by myself and, um, it really was a long trip, but it was pretty uneventful. There was some ice I ran into crossing the mountains in West Virginia, but it was fine. It was fine. So I met up with Sylvia Sunday evening and then, um, she was going to take me to see the shop keepsakes cause I had never been there. And we met up with Shelly from antique needleworkers for lunch one day on that Monday. And it was really a lot of fun. It was great to meet Shelly and, um, we really hit it off. It was, it was a great time. We had a nice lunch and we also shared some time with Sylvia's friend, Diane, who I know is quite a model stitcher for Sylvia running with needles and scissors. And we really had a delightful, delightful, delightful time. And then, um, headed over to keepsakes. Now keepsakes is quite the shop. They have tons and tons of models and it was just really, it was perfect. So one thing I was lucky to find there, or I didn't find it, Sylvia found it, was the whole three-part series of Margaret Cottom from Lottie Da. And Sylvia found this. She says, do you have this? And I said, no. Well, there was only one set of this, um, of the three-part mystery sampler. And I scooped that up. I was thrilled to get it. It came with the threads. And I just have to choose what linen that I'm going to stitch her on but I'm really um, anxious to jump into this, hopefully sooner rather than later. So anyway, Keepsakes was quite the experience. I'm planning on going to StitchCon first weekend in June, and so I'll have to make a visit to Keepsakes again. So the retreat at Houston Lodge was, was great. Um, apparently um, in the past, Barbara had um, hosted for a weekend, but this year it went for the whole week. We did not go for the whole week. Um, we went from Tuesday until Sunday. And on Tuesday, we met up with our friend Miriam um, and we did some antiquing in Waynesville and had a lovely lunch there. Although we didn't really realize it, but a lot of shops are closed in Waynesville on Tuesdays, but we still found some treasures. And then we checked into the lodge at Houston Lodge and we actually rented a cabin for the days that we were there. And it was really, it was really a great time. Um, unfortunately, Sylvia got sick and had to leave to go home on Friday, whereas Miriam and I stayed for the duration of the time. While we were there, we celebrated Miriam's birthday. And she says, oh, I don't like to celebrate my birthday. Well, we said, you're celebrating it this year. So in the morning, she was met with birthday decorations in the kitchen and living area of our um, cabin. And then Sylvia had made a coconut custard pie and a um, key lime pie because Miriam said those are her favorites. And we brought them to the main stitching room and shared them with the people at the retreat. I have some kind of thread or fuzz on my nose and it's kind of distracting. Um, so anyway, I think that Miriam had a lovely birthday. It was so cold, so cold out there. And little did I know that a cow that I knit, you know, a knitted cow that kind of looks like an Irish knit that I had knit for Sylvia as a hostess gift. And I knit the same cow and a pair of wool socks for Miriam for her birthday. Little did I know they would come in so handy, but it was so freezing there, but it didn't take away from the fun. It was great. Actually, years ago, I lived in Ohio and I have to say, I miss, I miss the snow. I miss the real winter um, because we just don't get that in Virginia the way that we did in Ohio. So anyway, um, along with the retreat came some stitchy kindness from friends that I'll share with you now. Okay, so... Miriam gifted us this darling little snowman. 
it feels like it's made out of sweaters and socks. Really cute. And it was very timely for the kind of weather that we were having at Houston Lodge. Also, she stitched this little winter bird and it's finished in an ador adorable little hoop. And Miriam was so generous. She also gifted us a retreat mat from Gamma's Treasures. And so up top, I put my little um, needle minder that I got from Keepsakes that says Keeps Peeps on it. So I've really been enjoying using this um, at the retreat and since we got home. Then Sylvia gave us this very heavy weighted bowl and it's magnetic. Um, so it's great for your orts, but also if you need to hold on to a needle at your place at the retreat, this was very handy. And then she also stitched us a project bag. Now, I don't know if Sylvia realized that the theme of the retreat was My Blue Heaven, but a blue project bag was perfect. And this is a nice laminated cotton. It feels really great and is great for travel because it is, um, I don't know if it's waterproof, but it's definitely water resistant. So that's what Sylvia gifted us with at the retreat. Okay, so also at the retreat, um, they had a welcome tea for the first time attendees which was absolutely lovely. Um, we, we had a tea and then everyone spoke about their stitching. Barbara mentioned how, you know, we were the freshman class and next year if we come back, we will be the sophomore class and the onus is on us to welcome next year's freshman class and how stitchers, there's such a bond with stitchers and all the craziness going on in the world, how we're just there for the peace and camaraderie and friendship and love of stitchers. And it was just wonderful. And at that tea, we were gifted this chart from Summer House Stitch Works. And also gifted a small candle in a little tin, but I don't have that. That's downstairs and I've been burning that. It's lovely. So that was, um, that was the tea. Also, they had a few miscellaneous classes that you could sign up for at the retreat. There was no pressure to sign up for the classes, but they were there if you wanted to. And honestly, next year, I think I'll sign up for more of the classes because they were really fun, great, and relaxing, and you could really learn a lot. And who doesn't like to learn something new when it comes to our love of needlework? So the class I took with Miriam was this one. Oh, I Ah, gotta reach everything. This one was to learn how to make tomato pin cushions in three different ways. So this is the one we made in class. This one was made from a tube of fabric. Um, and there was instructions in here how to make a little tiny one that's like a fob. And then another one, this one here, that you start with a circle of fabric. So I haven't made those yet, but the class was really, really fun. And um, it's something that'll come in handy when I wanna make more tomatoes, possibly as gifts, or if I wanna make pumpkins, same idea. So anyway, this was fun and the knowledge will certainly be used at another time. In fact, maybe I'll make some to have as a giveaway someday, stay tuned. Okay, so then at the retreat, they also have a guest designer, which I've never been to a retreat like that, that you find out who the designer is at the end of the retreat. But it was really kind of fun to have that. So uh, I think that was Friday night. Um, we found out that our guest designer was Beth Seal of Summer House Stitch Works. And Friday night, we got this little, we, oh, that's right. It was Friday night because we got this little chart to make a pin keep that said home sweet home. And we got all of the finishing, 
pieces and parts for that. So that's all here. There's the backing fabric, batting, pins, the round forms, and some rickrack. So that was on um, Friday evening. And then Saturday night was the big reveal of the project that Beth created for the weekend. And this is called My Blue Heaven. And this, the inspiration from this, for this was from a collar, an antique collar that she had. And that is reflected in the outside blue border. And then the house, I believe she said was her grandmother's house that she loved to go to and would have adventures there and really enjoy the time with grandma. But anyway, we got this chart and all of the threads to stitch it and the pin keep. And so that'll be quite the project um, to tackle sometime. Then also on Sunday before we left, there was a make it, take it, and we all made, let me see if you can see that, this little cabochon to put on a thread, the thread ring. So it was a great weekend. Um, next year, I'd love to go back for the whole week. It was just totally relaxing, that there was no pressure. All we had to do, do you think we can handle it was stitch, eat, laugh, shop because Barbara had, um, she called it the annex, but she had a shop set up at the retreat also. And it was, it was fabulous. It was great to make new friends, um, and see old friends and, you know, just be with, be with our peeps stitching. So at the retreat, some people were so generous. I received this little dish that says best friends from a new friend, Jan. And this little Oort dish, I've been using this since I've been home. Actually, I've been using it if I have to lay a needle down. So I'll use it just off to the side um, on my table just to kind of hold the needle so they don't fly or use my needle minder. Um, there was also a friend who did not want to be name mentioned but I've known her for a long, long time. She gave me this Ohio project bag, as well as an ORT container, you know, one of these collapsible ones that are great for travel, an ORT container that has some Ohio Buckeyes on it. Then another new friend named Dawn gave out these little retreat little bags or stitching emergency bags. They're great. Inside was candy, little scissors. These little scissors are the greatest. They're so sharp and they are travel friendly. Um, a little card to put with your projects when you start it and what you, what fabric and threads you've used. A little project tag. A few of these little clips that are great for finishing. And a little brush for scraping away any threads if you've had to frog some stitches. And this came in very handy because unfortunately when my mouth was going, I was not counting properly and I had to frog more than I would have liked to when we were at the retreat. So then the other gift I received at the retreat was from a new friend, Michelle Hellman. And she made this Oort container, but you know what? I was actually using it to keep my little things in at my seat also, my scissors and a ruler and tape measure, pen. Um, Michelle had a number of these at her, at her spot and she says she has them in all different project bags. And she was telling me how much fun they were to make. And I was trying to like, eye up and try to take measurements of how she did it and she was so sweet to come over and gift me one well this is super handy and it's really great for at home or the stitcher on the go so i really really appreciated this 
Michelle. And when I use it, I think of you. So thank you so much. It was so kind and so very generous of you. Another very generous gift that we received. Wait, I've got this fuzz. Another very generous gift we received was from Karen Hausknecht. I hope I didn't mess up her last name. And Beth Harvey. They had um, these little bags, these little accessory pouches, tiny little pouches that are perfect for change or a chapstick or they put in candy. They actually made one of these for everyone at the retreat. It was amazing. Everyone at the retreat, and I would say they were pushing 200 people at the retreat. And we could select which one we wanted from a big container of these um, little pouches that was so, so generous. And their sewing is perfect. So again, this is Karen and Beth. And they made these for everyone. Let me give you a closer look. Such a variety of fun fabrics and um, it was great. And I really enjoyed chatting with Karen for a while. She is so talented and so creative and just so willing to share her knowledge and her, her sewing with everyone. It was perfect. I really enjoyed um, meeting her and chatting with her. Then one other thing. I, oh, this is Karen's card. She goes by Nana K. And I will list her in my show notes. Also at the retreat, I met Ray Niles from Red Barn Samplers. Now Ray, I have known for years. Um, we were, we met through a um, stitching exchange several years ago. I had Ray and I sent her a gift and she has a floss tube, Red Barn Samplers, and I've been following her floss tube. And when I saw her at the retreat, I was so excited to go over and introduce myself. And it was as if we were kindred spirits. We really had a wonderful time chatting. We shared dinner together one night with a group of us. And it was, it was wonderful. So Ray very generously, um, well, the other side of this is a chart. I'll just kind of flash it. Um, it's called Isabella's Flower. And she gave us this chart. And then she also passed out this little three inch ruler that is just perfect for our new starts when you want to measure in either one, two or three inches to start a project. So this was, this was great. It was so wonderful to meet Ray and to hear her stitching journey as she ventured into designing. And so check out her floss tube, Red Barn Samplers. All right, so let me see what else we have going. Oh, I also have some more Stitchy Kindness. Um, I received a lovely note in the mail. And this was from someone named Deb, who received when I um, had my penny raffle, my penny dolls that I had for a giveaway. She received a penny doll and sent me a very heartfelt note, how much she appreciated receiving the doll and how much it meant to her and how grateful she was to have it, which that was very, very heartwarming for me. And I really appreciated her sending me a note um, and glad she's enjoying the doll. The other thing I received was from Beth Krushka. Krushka. I know I just totally butchered your name, Beth but it does not take away from my appreciation. She sent me a lovely note with this cat and she sent me some, two pair of those little mini socks that I talked about in my last floss tube. These little mini socks go on these guys that were old designs from Sisters and Best Friends. And in my last floss tube, I mentioned that I would love to find some of these socks again to make more of these um, little, little guys with the socks. These socks are so cute and so much fun. And Beth was so generous to notify me. She said that she started searching for them after seeing it on my floss tube. And she was able to get some for herself. And she had extra then. 
um, because she was really sourcing them and sent me two pair. I was so excited to receive them. But then, as if that wasn't enough, she went one step further. And being that we were on a sock theme, she sent me a beautiful skein of sock yarn and a fob, a little Irish fob. It's got a shamrock on it that I can now put on my um, Irish stitching bag. Um, she probably watched my floss tube where I related my Ireland trip um, last spring. But anyway, that was so very thoughtful and so very generous. And it was such a surprise when I came home from work that night because my husband said, your package, your package arrived. It must be something that you ordered. And I said, I, I really didn't order anything. And he says, well, you've got a package. And it, I was so excited to receive such stitchy kindness from Beth. So thank you very, very much. I truly appreciate it. Okay, so at Keepsakes, it was really fun to, um, like I mentioned, meet Barbara, who owns the shop, um, and then sponsored the retreat. But I also met um, Steph and Pam for just from Just Keep Stitching. And I also met Megan from Georgia Girl Stitches. And um, well, I mentioned Ray Niles already. And then, um, you know, it was just great to put faces and people, well, not faces because you see the people on floss tube, but it was just great to meet these floss tubers in person. So that was really wonderful. All right. So let me see what else we have. Oh, okay. So a couple things for haul. Just like I need one more hobby now that I have my Cricut and my stitching and my knitting, I also have another hobby that I enjoy and that is wool applique. Well, through the shop um, um, Attic Heirlooms, they do, they have a Facebook page for Attic Heirlooms and they always do like an ornament of the month for the year. So that ornament, the pattern for the wool ornament is available free um, for that month that it's offered on the Facebook page. However, you can also order individual kits for the ornament each month to buy them a la carte if you don't think you want them all. Or you can purchase a subscription for the kits and get all 12 of them just automatically sent to your home each month. And that's actually the best value because I think you pay for 11 and get get 12. Um, so anyway, this year the theme is Twas the Night Before Christmas, and um, they offered a woolly tree. Let me see. Oh, I don't have a picture of the woolly tree, I don't think. Well, she offered a woolly tree that you can order the kit for. So here's the wool. Here's the wonderful base. Crinkle, sorry about that. This is the base for the woolly tree. And the kit came with everything. It came with the dowels. It came with um, floral tape for wrapping the wool onto the branches. You got pre-cut branch pieces. Here's the big dowel. You got clothes pins to clip it clip it as you go while the glue dries and you even got the glue. So this was from Antique Attic Heirlooms. Oh, I don't know. I can't find the picture of the tree, but you can just imagine if you go to Attic Heirlooms on Facebook, you can find the picture of the woolly tree. So anyway, this was the kit for January. You got the ornament and the things to make the package. So it's super cute. I don't know about you, but when it comes to wool, I would rather have a kit because then you don't have to go and find little bits and snips of wool. Um, you just have it all there. So this is really fun. I want to make my woolly tree sooner rather than later and um, be able to hang the ornaments on it. That'll be a good inspiration to do the ornaments each month. So, and also it would be something I can show to you each month as I achieve my goal of creating these ornaments. So hopefully all of you will help me stay accountable. 
I would, I would love that because I would love to come December, have my woolly tree there with all the ornaments and the little packages underneath and it'll, it would be great. All right. So after, oh, now that I've been talking for a half hour already, I can start to go through my Whipgo bags for the year. Let me just clear out a little bit of this stuff. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention, some stitchy kindness. This project bag and little accessory bag was sent to my sent to me from my friend Jen. Jen Karen in California. She's been a dear friend of mine for years. And actually, I think my little shamrock pole that's hanging on my ball of yarn, my skein of yarn will look great on this. I think I'll put it on this. So Jen very kindly sent me this bag too, which is lovely. I'll fill it with a project after this video is over. Okay, so moving on to Whipgo. Um, like I said, I've never done it before. Again, there's a Facebook page for Whipgo. What you do is you make up a grid and you choose um, like a bingo grid and that has 25 spots on it. So you leave number 13 as a free spot and for 13, you can stitch whatever you want. And each month, um, two numbers are called and those are the projects that you work on um, each month. What you do is you assign a project to each spot on your board, each of the spots. I hope that's clear. It's probably not, but you know what? You can go to the Whipgo page on Facebook and maybe as this video, go, video goes on, I will um, explain it more clearly. Like I said, this is my first year and I really had to figure out what was going on. It's pretty self-explanatory. It just wasn't for me. So anyway, you have your 25 spots on the board. You write in a project of what you want to correspond to each spot on the board. I did not label my board just in order numerically. I put the numbers scattered around the board um, because that way, if you finish your goal for the month, um, you know, you can get bingos too. So this is kind of what I did. See, like this, even though this is the first spot, this is really my Whipgo number 18. Okay, so what I agreed to do was to stitch 10 hours on each piece during the week, during the month. So there's um, two numbers called for the month. I have way more stitching desire than time. I'm still working full time. And honestly, when I get home, I'm exhausted. So some nights, all I do for stitching is to pull out my project and touch it. Just touch it, cuddle it for a little bit and then fall asleep. <coughs> so anyway, <coughs> get kind of dry. <coughs> the numbers, the numbers called for January were <coughs> nine and 22. So my project number nine was Martha Martin from Lost Iris Naps. This is a sampler that I've been working on for quite a while. It was offered by Sampler Guild of the Rockies um, about two years ago. And I did not start it two years ago, but this is my progress. I will let you all know that these projects will be wrinkly when I show them because it was a lot to get ready for this video and ironing was not part of it. So anyway, I stitched most of the bottom, or I stitched the whole bottom part um, in my 10 hours for January. And then I also completed some of the motifs on the top. So that was my whip go. The number that was called was number nine. So again, that was Martha Martin. Some of these projects I have selected, um, you'll have like very little start, much to my chagrin. 
Um, some of them have a lot started on them and you'll see it's a very eclectic mix of projects and it'll be fun as the numbers are called throughout the year um, of what is selected for me to stitch of the goals I have set for myself. So the other one was my number nine and that was Elizabeth Walsh's work from Scarlet House. Now I have to say I was very tickled with myself because I had next to nothing stitched on this. Um, I had a little bit of uh, what looks like a coverlet on the bottom, but I have totally stitched this. Um, I stitched in Elizabeth Walsh's work, but then also between the two baskets of flowers, I personalized it for myself in a, light, in a lighter color of thread. I stitched my initials and 2024. So this goes into a sweet little sewing tray. Um, the tray was from Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby, and I did not have the size that was called for. So I did have the smaller tray. So I stitched it on 40 count instead of 36 count, and I think it should fit. And then this is a little needle case, and down there in the corner is a fob. So, and then um, this did have EW up there as the initials, but I wanted to put my own initials. So I found an alphabet that was the same in the Red Letter Day book from Teresa Vinette. And then I, so I charted that out and fit that right in there. So anyway, that was my January whip go. I was thrilled that I met my goal. And then I actually had a completion so I was just tickled with that. So maybe this whip go is a good thing for me. Okay, so for February, they called number 24 and number three. So my number three, hmm, I don't know what happened to it. Here it is. Number three for me was Matilda by Hands Across the Sea. And this was one of the charts that was in the red box um, that Nicola had for her birthday. Oh, probably a year or so ago now, maybe last year. Um, so anyway, this is Matilda. And I only have a small start on her. I am stitching her on 36 count Brea by Needles and Flax. And the threads I'm using are Cherry Cobbler and Wavy Navy. I happened to see on Antique Needleworkers that Shelly was using these colors and um, I really liked it. So I stitched mine with, started stitching mine with the same. So this has been a fun stitch so far and February 1st, I'm going to dive right in and start working on Matilda once again. The other project for February was um, number 24. And my number 24 is a kit from Mary Cox that was offered, um, I believe, through the Orange Coast um, Sampler Guild. I believe it was through them. I don't really remember anymore. Um, but it's a petite regal sewing box. Now this one, I have a bit of a start. Oh, a bit of a start. And that should be, that should be fun. And we'll see what happens. This is all, this all gets put together. It's a little sewing box and you know me and Mary Cox things. I love them. And it all goes into one of these little shaker boxes. I do have to say that please keep Mary and her family in your thoughts and prayers. Um, she has announced recently that she has retired from teaching for some personal issues going, in, going on in her family. And um, she has offered so, so much to the stitching community and was, I know the teaching and designing 
is a passion of hers. So for her to give that up, I'm sure it's very difficult for her all the same, but she's doing the right thing in, you know, tending to the personal issues that she has going on in her family right now. Um, so anyway, I will think of Mary as I stitch her pieces. There's a couple of her pieces on my whip go, which you will get to see. Um, but really my heart and prayers go out to Mary and her family. So maybe you could keep her in yours too. So these are my projects on my whip go for January. Okay, so now I thought what I would do is go through the rest of my list. I will say that I did not take everything out of the bags. There will be some zipping and crinkling and crunching, but for me to take all these projects out of the bags, it would have been a total disaster for me to put it all back later on. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna deal with it. All right, so number one on my whip go, again, in the month, I thought you had to finish the thing in the month, but no, you just have to put as much work into it as you contract with yourself. You can put more in, but um, so I opted for 10 hours, 10 hours a month on each piece. Um, and it really takes the stress off. So anyway, number one on my WIPCO board is by the Scarlet Letter. And it's the um, uh, badger, the badger, unicorn, and what do they call it? I always get mixed up with that. It's the unicorn badger. Here it is. Sorry. Peacock, unicorn, and badger from Scarlet Letter. This is a full coverage piece. Super fun to stitch. Um, this is stitched on 40 count. So I really can't wait for this to be called because I'm looking forward to diving into this piece again. This Scarlet Letter chart is great. It's, it looks like a coloring book. Um, it's all in color and it really feels like you're coloring when you're stitching. I'm stitching mine with Avera Swa silks and look at this lovely, look at this lovely load of silks. It's just luscious. Okay. So that's my um, whip go number one. So in the number two spot for whip go, I have another Mary Cox piece. This was in a project bag that I made to accommodate this project. And this is the DeWitt School. This was a class from a number of years ago that I took with the Buffalo Guild. This is my progress so far. So hopefully when it's called for whip go, I'll make a lot more progress, but you make this young lady's sewing box. It is a delight. So that's whip go number two. Okay. So whip go number three. Oh, is the Hats Matilda for February. Okay, whip go number four is from Hobby House Designs. And it is my Dasher and Dancer, which I have really been picking away at this year. Recently, before whip go started, back in December, I got quite a bit done on this. Here we go. Quite a bit done. So this is on 36 count Dolly Madison and I'm stitching it with um, um, Classic Color Works Bandana. And I don't know how many skeins I need for this, but I think I've mentioned before that I bought extra because I always seem to get what I call walking around thread. It gets stuck to me, it gets stuck to a blanket, it gets stuck to my pajamas. I find it in my bed, I find it at the grocery store, falling off the leg of my pants. Um, so I always buy extra thread when I have a long-term project because I always get that walking around thread that I end up losing plenty of it. So anyway, moving right along, this is project number five, housed in a lovely pillowcase. And this is, 
Oh, this is a this is a beauty. And a little bit of backstory on this. This is Every Good and Perfect Gift Sampler by Catherine Theron. And the directions for this are in a notebook. So this is some serious stitching, guys. Serious stitching. This is the finished piece. And this is mine. Okay, the backstory on this is back in September of 2019, Catherine lives, lives near me and she was offering a pilot class to stitch this because she was supposed to stitch this, teach this at the EGA National in 2020. Okay, so you kind of know where this is going. So I was in the pilot class with her, moving along perfectly. She wanted us to have it finished by June. So the class was in September. We were supposed to have it finished by June of 2020. Well then, sadly, as we all know, COVID hit and I worked on it for quite a bit during COVID, but then I got to the spiral trellis stitches in this. There's, Catherine loves spiral trellis stitch. I am not really friends with spiral trellis stitch, but I persevered. In fact, during COVID, I met her, we both had masks on and we met her in her driveway and we sat in her driveway in chairs and she went through the spiral trellis stitch with me and we just have not become friends. Spiral trellis stitch, Catherine and I are friends. So anyway, it is my goal to finish this. I have since taken another class with Catherine um, where she has plenty of spiral trellis stitch. So I don't really want to have it beat me, but I think I'm ready to use a road, a road stitch in here if necessary. I do want to have this finished. I do want to have it on my wall and I'm not going to keep my difficulty with spiral trellis stitch from having it on my wall. So anyway, let me show you this beauty again. She's awesome. And so I can't wait for this whip go to get called because I'm anxious to revisit this piece. It was lovely. And as it turned out, the EGA national seminar was canceled that year. And I don't even really know when Catherine taught that piece, um, after that, but anyway, sad, but true story. Okay. Number six is never let you go from heartstring sampler samplery. And this I stitched, I started to stitch as a anniversary piece for my husband and I. And I got a little hung up on, um, well, here I show you. We've had a few more anniversaries since I started this, but love is worth the wait. So this is all I have started on this. But I got a little hung up on some over one, oh, it looks like I removed it all already. There was some over one that just seemed too thick and it was not really going very well. So my friend told me, oh, I don't, oh, that you can use Mettler thread. It's a Mettler, I don't know what number Mettler thread it is here, but anyway, Mettler thread and it's very thin and it's a quilting thread and you can use it, um, a sewing and quilting thread and you can use it to do the over one. So that's what I plan on doing to help me get moving on Never Let You Go. This has a darling verse on it. It says, I wish I was a little seed. I grow and grow and grow. I I'd wrap myself around your heart and never let you go. So I'm trying to stitch this for my husband and I, but just like love, sometimes things have to wait. So this does too. We have our 34th wedding anniversary this year, so maybe I'll have it done for that. Okay, so my whip go number seven. Oh boy, this is getting to be a long video, but that's okay, fun stuff is another Mary Cox piece. This is called Eternal Love Stitching Tray and Accessories. Now this piece, 
I really have quite a bit finished on it. Um, I don't want to unscroll all of this, but I was doing this, um, stitching this in honor of my mother. Um, I started it when she was still alive. Um, I have some of her information on here. She was born March 30th, 1931. I have her name up here, Anne Lyons Flynn. Her home, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And um, this is what the verse says. Oh, I started this in 2015. Thou look upon the bounty of life and see so much. Blue skies, green trees, vibrant flowers, and thee. Rejoice and reflect in whose graces I touch, for love and truth and kindness be forever free. So I was stitching this for my mother in honor of her. Um, she actually treated me to this class that I took in Buffalo. Um, so I thought that I wanted to personalize this for her. This makes a little tray that then fits into this box. So now, sadly, my mother passed away in December of 21. And um, I will make this piece as still a tribute to her life. She's very missed. And so this is almost finished. So that will be a fun whip go to work on. I just haven't been able to bring myself to work on it again. There is some personalization that needs charted. And um, I think that was my hang up. I don't really mind doing that, but I think that's what slowed me down. So anyway, that was that whip go. This one is number eight. And this is in a bag that my friend Stacy gave me for my birthday. It's adorable. It says my birthday stitch. And this is all embroidered on there, my birthday stitch. So this was my, it's Catherine Croft from um, Scarlet House. Here it is here. All these pieces are like a sampler mat and then there's a berry and a needle case. And it looks like a little fob and pillow. There's several pieces to this. I was going to stitch this as my birthday stitch. Somebody on Instagram had said that she was going to do it too. And I think she has it finished already. <laughs> what I don't have finished is really an embarrassment. This is, this is embarrassing. Guys, this is all I have stitched. Looks like I was having too much fun for my birthday, which I guess is the way it should be. And this is on picture this plus 36 count fog. So that was my birthday stitch. You know, I'm really excited about having these numbers called and then it selects for me which projects I work on each month. So I'm really looking forward to that. And it's been fun so far, like I mentioned. Okay, so let me get rid of this basket and pull my other one through. Oh, this one. This one's a real embarrassment. This is number 10. I think that birthday stitch was number nine. Is that correct? Oh, eight. Oh, nine. Project nine was my Martha Martin. That was January's whip go. Okay, so I, things didn't get mixed up. Project number 10 is Sherry Jones, Button Lover's Brag Book. Here we go. This piece is absolutely stunning when it is completed. You stitch this book and then different pages to hold different types of buttons. This was a class that I took in Ohio a number of years ago, too many years ago. And I have stitched, this is kind of embarrassing, this. It was all we did, in, what I did in class. This is all I have stitched. I can't believe it. So one year, my friend Sarah and I decided, she has this also, and we decided we were going to focus on stitching our button book. This probably goes back two or three years. So I said, okay, we can stitch on our button book this year. And I made her a project bag like this to match mine. And that's as far as we got that year. Putting our project into this bag 
with button fabric. That's all we did. But I will say there is something very cute in here too, which I totally forgot about. But I had made this little accessory bag too, to go with it. But, oh well. At least I know I'll work on it this year at some point. I just need to get off of square one with these things. And then sometimes once I start stitching, it just goes on. Oh, I just stuck myself on a pin. It just goes on and on and gets finished as we can see with my Elizabeth Walsh's work. Okay, so the next one is a Hands Across the Sea, Eliza Martha Linfoot. Now I, this was a stitch along a few years ago and I was moving along perfectly with the stitch along, getting every monthly assignment completed. And then, in fact, I think I was ahead and then I hit a snag. The verse is in, you can hardly even see it there. The verse is in lavender and that didn't really appeal to me. So I just stopped stitching. You can hardly even see it. So anyway, I just have to decide what thread I want to stitch the verse in. Um, and I'll get going again on her. So like I said, I'm really looking forward to that happening because I know once I get stitching on her, I can finish her. I'm really looking forward to doing that basket of fruit at the bottom. Um, the whole border's done and matched up the first time. And it was really a pleasure to stitch, but I just got snagged when it came to that verse in lavender. I didn't really care for that. Different, different, you know, likes and dislikes for everyone. So anyway, that's project number 11. You should see my couch. It is just loaded with stuff. Project number 12. Oh, isn't this a cute bag? This cute bag that I made with fruit on it. I tell you, I love my project bags. And when I, I like to make them and when someone gifts me a project bag, it's great. I always think of them when I use it. So it really makes it fun. Okay, so project number 12 is really not huge. This is from the Orange Coast Sampler Guild in California. Here, let me take it out of here. It's a Hello from Liz Matthews sampler tree. Here we go. There we go. This really won't take too long. And again, I think I'll definitely get it finished in the month that it's called. But all I have started is this. And that's it. You know, it's really kind of embarrassing how many of these things I have negligible, minimal, next to nothing stitched on them. But hey, you know what? We do what we love, we stitch what we love, and there's really no apologies. If I'm enjoying it, then that's all that counts. Okay, so the next one, all right, this was number 13, and 13 is supposed to be a free spot that you stitch, you work on whatever you want. I'm assuming it could be a piece that you enjoyed working on before number 13 was called. I really don't know. So I did select a project for 13 and that is Elizabeth Isles from the Scarlet Letter. Here, let me take this out of the bag. Now, this was for, um, I think it was Laura's birthday or Brenda's birthday one time. Well, I did stitch it then and I did get the whole outline done. And one of the little sweet angels at the top, they're super cute. And I guess when her birthday party was over, so was my stitching. But I really hope to get going on this again which I will. And so that's lucky number 13. All right. 14. Isn't this a blast from the past? This is when plastic bags were perfectly good to hold our stitching and now look what we do. 
This is Lottie Da, My Country. And here we go. Hopefully this will be called when I feel like stitching patriotic, but I'll forge ahead. It's really quite a bit done and I'm sure I will be able to finish this when it's called. Such a nice piece. And it's been happily living in the Ziploc bag, but look at the beauty, the cutie that I found in this bag. This is a little um, needle case that was from a Shepherd's Bush retreat. Oh, what year? What year? 2004. I had no idea where this needle case was and here I found it in this bag. This was a Charland um, design from Shepherd's Bush. And one thing that was kind of cool when you took a class from Charland, she looked at the class list and charted out our names for us. So this was a really fun piece. And it's lined with some Philip Morris um, fabric. Okay. So that was number 14. Only 10 more to go if you have to pause and come back, but I'll still, I'm still here showing projects. Okay, number 15. This is um, Heartstring Samplery. This was from their Sunday Stitches. This is Amazing Grace. And this is in a bag from Violets and Verses, and I love this. Unlike bikinis, flip-flops fit every year. Isn't that the truth? I love flip-flops. I wear them from the first warm day in the spring until my toes freeze in November. But anyway... I love this bag that I bought from Violets and Verses. And this is what I mean when I use this bag, I think of Jennifer. And it's it's really kind of like a nice little way to visit. So anyway, oh, oh, not too much started on this. Yikes. Really? That's all I have done? Okay. I just can't imagine having some of the whips that people have because just going through 24 here is giving me some um, anxiety. Okay, this one is um, number 16 and this is the Delaware Valley Ferry and this is taught by the, for the um, Delaware Valley Historic Needlework Guild and this was a class from Erica Michaels this piece is almost is almost finished. Well, no, it's not. Not really. There's my berry basket. It's really not finished. There's more on this than that. But anyway, stay tuned. Um, the berries that Linda Stoltz, Erica Michaels does, are really adorable. And she, in her class, gave so many great finishing ideas of how to do the top how to um, stuff the berry properly, and it's just great. If you ever have the opportunity to take a class from Linda Stoltz, Erica Michaels, um, take one. It's totally worth it. It'll be a great time. So that was number 16. All righty. Number 17. This is Plum Street Blue Skin. Okay, well, I can cut myself a little bit of a break on this because I stitched this once all the way through um, and it was for an exchange and I mounted it in like a white hammered metal tray. I think I got it at Walmart, but it was perfect. So once I sent that off to my exchange partner, I thought that I had to stitch one for myself. So I started stitching it again for myself and this really, from the picture, doesn't really look like it's so huge. And it's not really huge, but it's bigger than I thought it was. 
And so here's the back of the horse. And I've been trying to, it's kind of hard to see because it's very light. I've been trying to manipulate my overdye threads to kind of give some dimension to the um, back leg of the horse. You know, I stitched some, did my stitches around in a circle to kind of give it like the horse haunches back there. So anyway, great stitch. I do have another tray to mount it in, so that'll be fun as we revisit that. Now look what I found in this bag. I found a scissor fob that my friend Sylvia made for me quite a long time ago and put some Dovo scissors on it that honestly, I wasn't quite sure where it was. I knew it wasn't like lost, lost, but she had stitched my monogram on there. How, how nice was that? So this, um, this will be back into circulation again. And then I also found a little thread mat, thread keep from um, um, Barry, Stitch Work, Stitch Folk. She's changed her logo now, but this is when you really had to like jump on it when they were advertised on Etsy. So I was able to get a thread mat from her. All right, let me put away blue skin here. Okay, that's 17. Number 18. This is Scarlet House Anna Grater. Okay, I think this is another embarrassing one with nothing started. Here's Anna Grater. I just love this little sampler. I love the little vase in the center. But sadly, you can, this is like airing dirty underwear. This is all I have done on Anna. But you know, it's really kind of fun to visit all these old friends that have been tucked away. So we'll see when that number is called, when we get number 18. Out comes Hannah. All right, number 19 is okay. This is another project bag that I sewed. This is an advent band sampler from iStitch Designs. Um, don't have too much done on this. With eye stitch, you this is stitched on thin banding. This banding is about two inches wide. Um, each day during Advent for 24 days, she sent you another bit of the chart every day. And I was keeping up for quite a while. Well, not really, a few days. And then that's when my mother fell ill and I just could not bring myself to concentrate on stitching over one at that time. Here, I'll show it to you again. And then the next year after my mom had passed, I just could not bring myself to do it. So now it's time, but it's great. I mean, I can't show you this because it's all the charts, but every day you just print off the next piece of the sampler and it was really fun to do. And I'm really, I was going to try to stitch it this year during Advent, but cause you know, I like Advent calendars, but I had so much other things going on during Advent that I never got back to it. So now I will, even if it's in July, I'll stitch it. Okay, so number 20 is another heartstring samplery. And this is um, Baby It's Cold Outside. Now I have a pretty good start on this. I believe. Oh, not really. The border matches. I did it on a different linen. I did it on a, it's not like a gray linen because I figured it would add to, you know, a gray day when it's cold outside. And then these are the threads that go with it. All right, so that's that. Oh, here's my pair of cheaters that I was looking for. Okay, so that's Baby It's Cold Outside. 
And maybe I'll still be stitching on this in the winter instead of the summer. Who knows? When it's called, I'll work on it. Oh, I don't want to lose that chart. Okay, number 21 is a sampler from Violets and Verses. It's Christiana Richardson. And this one, I am almost finished. Now, I was using this to stitch on when I would take the train up to New York to see my son. And I would work on it religiously when I would take the train. But we haven't been up there in a while. Um, or I was working on something else on the train the last time. I just haven't gotten back to her. So I do want to finish this up. Um, it's a sweet sampler. Uh, Jennifer Richardson of Violets and Verses taught this as like a Zoom retreat. I think it might have been during COVID. I don't really remember. I don't really remember. But I think it was, it might have been during COVID. And being that her last name is Richardson, she thought it was fun to teach a sampler, that, of course, that has Richardson on it. So that will get done. Then number, um, wait, that was number 21. Number 22, we already talked about. That was my Elizabeth Walsh's work from um, Scarlet, from the Scarlet House. Um, number 23, this is the last one. Okay, now, this is pitiful because this is the Shepherd's Bush Thanksgiving trifles. I knew it was in this bag, but what I didn't know until I started preparing for this video is that all I have are the three fabrics because there's three little pillows you make. These are great linens. And my threads, because I would have them sent and kitted up from Shepherd's Bush. You could buy just the chart or you could buy it kitted up. But what I don't seem to have in here is the chart or the picture of the chart or anything to do with this other than the linen and the threads. So whenever this number gets called or before, I will have to go on a search and destroy mission to try to find all the pieces and parts that go with this. Because, oh, there is also finishing materials. Oh, here they are. Okay, here we go. There is um, buttons and fabrics and beads and ribbons that come to finish these. If you've never done any of the Shepherd's Bush trifles, they are really fun. They have a number of them for different holidays and seasons, and you stitch like three little pillows that are great as little bowl fillers or just to have on a tiered tray or something like that. And they're super fun to do. They're easy to stitch, easy to finish, but it would be a lot easier if I knew where the chart was and the picture. So it's all about life goals. I'll get it to, I'll get it together. Okay. So the last one would be number 24 for my whip go. And again, that's the Mary Cox petite regal sewing set, which is actually my stitch for February. So I'm really hoping to make some progress on that. I'm having a stitch weekend next weekend in Ocean City with some friends. And so hopefully I will make some progress on that. Um, we're going to Salty Yarns and they have a big Super Bowl sale. So we're really looking forward to getting together and stitching. And again, stitching, eating, laughing, shopping, just all those great things that go along with this stitch community. All right, so I do have, like I don't have enough to stitch here, Today, I just kitted up two more things um, that I would like to get started on surrounding the holiday. I have Cupid Sampler from, here, let me take it out of the package. Crinkles. Cupid Sampler from Whip by Needle and Thread. 
And I'm going to stitch this with Weeks Dye Works Lancaster Red. And I'm going to stitch it on some 36 count Brea by Needle and Flax. The Brea has like a reddish tone, well, reddish brownish modeling on it. See, it kind of picks up some red there, but it is brownish. Anyway, I don't really know what the intent is, but I think these colors will look great on it and it'll really look like a nice vintage sampler. The other piece that I just downloaded from Sub Rosa Designs is Be My Valentine. Is that the sweetest or what? So I'm stitching this on 40 count vintage country mocha. It only has three colors. It has um, Classic Color Works Cayenne, Weeks Dye Works Sage, and Weeks Dye Works Molasses. Um, I might change some of those colors up a little bit um, because I don't have all of those, but, but we'll see. So that's what I'm looking at. Oh, wait, one more thing. Here it is. Oh, sorry for the reach. Oh, I don't know what it fell. Oh, well, I'm looking to um, stitch a little Annie Lewis sampler from Lottie Da. I honestly don't know what I did with all of her pieces and parts. This room is a mess. It's trashed. So anyway, stay tuned. You'll be seeing some of little Annie Lewis also. I picked up the um, chart and the linen for that while I was at the Stitch Away retreat for, from just from keepsakes. Anyway, I am starting to get all kinds of tongue tied and I have rambled on enough here and probably showed you years of stitching potential, but I can't wait to dive in and I am really, really enjoying Whipco. So check it out. Um, you might want to start just for what 11 months are left of the year, or if you're really ambitious, you could maybe catch up for January in February and meet your February goal. One thing that the organizer says is it's your board, your stitches, your whip go, and you can change things around however you want. If you, if a number is called for a project that you're just not feeling that month, don't do it switch it with something else. So it's really just for us to revisit some of those whips, those time-honored projects that live in our baskets and our stitching bags and stashed behind our sofas and in baskets and in drawers and in closets all around our house. And it's really, truly been a joy so far for January. And I'm really looking forward to entering into March with it. So anyway, if you have liked what you've seen today, visiting with Lady Huzzah, please subscribe and like and click off the bell on YouTube and you'll be notified of my um, videos to come. So until we meet again, my friends, may you find calm, joy, and relaxation in your stitches. Bye. See you next time.